Hi everyone. Um, today we are going to go through uh, thermal properties of metal, which is the solid liquid gas properties. Blah blah blah. Okay. Um, if you are my student, you can take out a pen, pencil, and a pocket paper or notebook. Uh, cause you can write quite a bit. And if you are not my student, uh, you can contact me if you have any queries. Um, in my website, uh, via my website or my Google form in the description. And let's go. So uh, this topic is mainly about uh, memorizing and uh, calculations for uh, two sets two for after for some parts. Okay. Um. So let's start with the memorizing portions. Uh. First one is internal energy. Okay. So um, you can start writing. Internal energy is the sum of internal potential energy and internal kinetic energy of the particles. So uh, this is uh, not really an official uh, link, but um, whenever the question starts asking about this, you should link internal energy, internal kinetic energy to temperature, and internal potential energy to change in state. Okay? So when something has higher internal kinetic energy, there will be higher temperature. Higher internal potential energy, it will change in there will, there will be a change in state from uh, solid to liquid or liquid to gas. Okay, and sometimes solid to gas. Okay, uh, so basically that's that. Remember, kinetic internal kinetic energy is temperature. Internal potential energy is state. Okay, and uh, when you're done writing the definition. We'll move on to the next slide. Okay, otherwise you can pause and uh, write the linkage. Okay. Okay, so the next two definitions to know are these. Okay. Um, will they be asked if they are, if it is asked, uh, it's one mark and probably one of these. So um, yeah, possible. Okay. For now, um, you just write all these definitions. Okay, and there are definitions for this. Okay, and you realize that there are a lot of similarities in the terms. So by the time you write, finish writing the fourth one, you should be able to remember them quite easily. Okay. So um, you can pause the video and write all these four. While you're writing, I'll just read it out. Heat capacity is the amount of energy required to increase the temperature of one Oh, sorry, temperature of substance by 1 Kelvin or degree Celsius without change in state. Specific heat capacity is the amount of energy required to increase temperature of 1 kg of substance by 1 degree Celsius or 1 Kelvin without change in state. And latent heat of fusion or vaporization is the amount of heat absorbed or released when a substance changes state from solid to liquid or liquid to gas uh, or vice versa. Now, specific latent heat of vaporization is the amount of heat absorbed or released when 1 kg of substance changes from solid to liquid or liquid to gas or vice versa. Now, uh, you do notice the, the um, similarities and uh, you should uh, because with the word specific, there should be 1 kg of substance or unit mass. Okay, if your, if your textbook has a similar but a different uh, definitions use the ones in your textbook or the ones from your teacher. Okay, the other ones marking your exam papers. Okay, now uh, you can pause to write these down. If not, uh, move on. Okay, so next thing is uh, typical uh, explanation wordings that you need to remember. Okay, usually they ask like describe the solidification or melting or and boiling condensation as processes of energy transfer without energy change in temperature. So they sometimes ask why there's no change in temperature and the uh, and uh, change of state. Okay, so you'll use the wordings that I'm going to tell you. So during melting, okay, heat is absorbed to break the intermolecular bonds in solid, resulting in an increase in internal potential energy, okay, without increase in internal kinetic energy, okay, without. So no change in temperature. Okay, uh, do note that you can write it in the opposite manner for freezing, right? Instead of absorb, you'll be released. Okay. Instead of break, you'll be formed. Okay. So once you're done writing, okay, we'll move on to the next uh, part where we 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 write the wording for boiling and condensation. Okay. So yeah. During boiling, heat is absorbed to overcome the intermolecular forces intermolecular bonds in liquid, 
and atmospheric pressure. Okay, these are the extra words and atmospheric pressure, resulting in an increase in internal potential energy again, without increase in internal kinetic energy, resulting in change in state without change in temperature. Okay, um, yeah, you can pause to write the wording. Um, once you're once you're done, uh, we'll move on. Okay, next thing is uh, to memorize three differences, uh, at least three differences between uh, boiling and evaporation. If you have other preferable ones, use them. Uh, these are the shorter ones that I use. Okay, one is occurs at fixed temperature, the other occurs over a range. Okay, you can see you cannot say any because it doesn't evaporation doesn't really occur at zero or negative temperatures, right? Okay, over a range of temperatures. Some boiling occurs throughout the liquid. Uh, evaporation occurs at the surface. Boiling requires heat source. Evaporation does not require. So you can pause the video to write down. Um, once you're done, continue. Next thing is uh, using the equations to solve the questions. Okay, what are the two equations? Uh, mainly Q equals to NC delta theta. This is for temperature change. Q equals to NLB for change in state from liquid to gas. NLF. Uh, change in state from solid to liquid. Okay, and how to solve the question is usually heat gain equals to heat loss, and you can add up MC delta theta, uh, blah 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 equals to NLF or NLV or plus something. Okay, okay. So um, that that so uh for my students, I'll give you a lot of questions to practice on. Um, yeah, I'm sure there'll be some errors, so we'll go through that. There should be some points to be noted when doing the questions. Okay, next one is uh, being able to interpret the cooling curve. Okay, so you need to know that uh, when there's a temperature change, they are all in one state. Okay, it can be solid, liquid, or gas. Now, during the temperature change, uh, during the change in state, there is no temperature change. The temperature remains the same. Okay, the temperature remains the same. And there are two states, solid and liquid, liquid and gas. Okay, now um, I use a different color highlight to show. Okay, now for temperature change portions, okay, the energy is calculated by MC delta theta, where delta theta is the temperature, change in temperature. Okay, increase from 50 to 100 means delta theta is 50. Increase from 20 to 100, delta theta is 80, 100 minus 20. Now, when there is a change in state but no change in temperature, change in state but no change in temperature, Q equals MLF or MLB. Okay, yeah, that's that. And uh, you can use that uh, for the calculations of the questions that I'm going to give you. And with that, that is the end of this. Uh, main part is the memorizing of the terms, definitions, and then the answers, okay? And then uh, calculations, okay? So those who are given the practice questions, do try them, and um, you should have some additional questions for me. Yeah, that's all for this topic.